Ashes of Creation's month-long Alpha 1 test is officially over. Nodes, questing, boss fights, siege PvP, gathering, crafting, ocean content? And hell, just enjoying the scenery. This video is going to be my attempt at summarizing it all. Here's everything I learned from Ashes of Creation's Alpha 1. Let's start with Ash's most unique and core system that separates it from other MMOs, Nodes. In Alpha 1, Nodes only had three of the eventual six stages of progression planned, these three stages being Crossroads, Encampment, and Stage 3, The Village, which is the first stage where the Node will take a racial influence from the race that contributed the most to that Node's development. Here are the systems and functionalities Nodes served in Alpha 1. As a Node levels up, each stage provides more content in the form of quests, extra systems like the ability to elect a mayor who can decide to build different buildings within the Node and set the tax rate for the citizens. There there are vendors that sell schematics for crafting, mounts, weapons, armor, gathering tools, and items used in crafting recipes. You can craft via interacting with these same vendor NPCs. As nodes progressed through their current three stages, higher tier crafting schematics became purchasable. There's also a guild master which allows you to create a guild for 500 gold, as well as an apartment manager that allows you to spend 2,500 of your hard-earned gold to get hardcore scammed. Real space player houses inside the nodes walls were in Alpha 1, but most of their utilities were not. These three NPCs inside a node allowed you to register for and participate in sieges. There's a caravan master, which as far as I can tell is placeholder and served no functionality in Alpha 1. So yeah, pretty basic, but telling of some of the core aspects of the node system to be expanded upon in the future. Second only to nodes in terms of core content is questing. In Alpha 1, there was no obvious marker to tell you that an NPC had a quest, like an exclamation mark above their head or anything like that. Now this may turn some people off, but after playing through the game this way myself, I felt more immersed and cared about the quests more than I do in most MMOs. It encourages exploration and makes the world feel slightly more alive when you have to interact with every NPC at least in a small way. Press E. Oh, no quest. Bye Rick the NPC, I'm off to find someone else who's gonna send me 40 miles one way to talk for 5 seconds with another NPC and then 40 miles back. It really wasn't always a tedious running simulator though. There were also many quests hidden throughout the world with no hook from the main quest lines. This really encouraged me to explore and I found lots of neat one-off quests throughout the world. For example, this looks like a normal elite mob, Pretty Lily the Perfect, but once you get her down to a certain HP, she turns into a quest-giving NPC and you bring her bounty into another NPC for a reward. Another thing about questing that made it feel more immersive is quest dialogue is not always linear. Some quest givers had conversation trees where you had multiple options, although choosing one option or another ultimately didn't change a whole lot in Alpha 1 other than choosing the incorrect option and just having to choose again until you get it right. I believe these options may have much more impact in the future, but maybe I'm just on a little too much hopium. This is the third topic of this video, but to many people it's the most core feature of the game, combat. For the first few weeks of Alpha 1, melee players were stuck with root motion while using their basic attack, which although looked and felt somewhat impactful, took a lot of control away from the player as attacking locked you, moving in the direction you attack. On August 5th, however, unrooted combat was added to Alpha 1 and it entirely changed the feel and flow of combat for the better. There are definitely still changes that could improve it as the unrooted basic attacks have lost any sort of impact feeling. PvP combat was a little bit simple and spammy due to the limited available abilities at level 15, the max level in Alpha 1. Remember, level 50 is the planned max for the game's future. However, even in the basic form it is currently, the large scale 50v50 group PvP in sieges felt awesome. Even with teams this big, things felt cohesive and there was an organic feeling push and pull of one team starting to overpower the other team, then the losing group would mount up and retreat, meeting up with their respawning teammates, regroup, and make another push together. Big ol' world bosses. I don't have a ton to say about as I played most of Alpha Solo. I did participate in a few boss battles. I was in Asmongold's raid for the first pyroclastic worm kill of Alpha 1, and I also joined in on some of the developer organized raiding in the last couple days of Alpha 1. But all I really have to say about that content is my limited experience with it felt pretty good. Animations 
stations need to be ironed out, a few additional mechanics wouldn't hurt. But these are things that are expected to be a little bit lacking in Alpha, and for what it was, it was fun. Now let's go over some character stuff. Races and classes. There were four playable races in Alpha 1, Kalar Humans, Veiloon Humans, Dunir Dwarves, and Empyrean Elves. There were no racial passive slash abilities in Alpha 1. For classes, we only had three, just enough for the Holy Trinity. Mage is your big damage dealer. <laughs> Good fucking buy. Cleric for big heals with some decent DPS in their own right. Tank for, uh, tanking. Tank was the hardest to play, especially solo. I hope tank gets buffed and ironed out in the future, but to be fair, it does function better in a group setting. Next, we have gathering. This will be a short one because it was pretty basic in Alpha 1. This was every gatherable material in the game. They have tiers, common, uncommon, rare, and epic. A common tier gatherable requires a common tier or higher tool to gather it. Uncommon requires uncommon or higher, etc. Next, and this is in my opinion one of the most underrated and impressive things about Alpha 1. The look and general feel of the world. After a few days of questing and feeling out the core systems in the game, I thought my interest might fall off and I'd stop playing, but I found myself a lot of days during Alpha waking up and being genuinely excited just to explore the world. The four biomes were beautifully designed and the atmosphere of it all just sucked me in. This want to explore was also compounded by the previously mentioned one-off quests dotted throughout the world waiting to be found. I won't harp on this anymore as there's not much else to say. So in conclusion, a lot of things went right in Alpha 1. A couple things went wrong. I've personally participated in alphas of games that went 10 times worse than Ashes did. But we as players and blossoming super fans of this game, we have to be realistic and understand that there's a colossal amount of work to be done by Intrepid even just before Alpha 2, Alpha 2, Beta 1, Beta 2, launch. It all feels so far away, especially when likely you are like me and ready with all your being to jump in right now. The most important thing is that you keep in some contact with this project, even in the downtime over the next few months, and make sure that your opinions are heard so that there is a healthy, consistent discussion throughout the entire development so that we, the players, can help Intrepid achieve the best game possible. Thank you very much for watching. I am excited for the future of this game, and I hope you are too.